So you want to be a famous director, but all you have is Game Builder Garage to create your cinematic masterpiece in. Well, maybe I can help. In video editing, you use a timeline editor to tell the program when to play certain video and audio clips. The same is actually true in game development when it comes to making cutscenes. You use a timeline and then you put scripted actions and sequences on that timeline. So today I'm going to be showing you how to create a timeline in Game Builder Garage so that you can create your own cutscenes. Our actual timeline is going to be a move marker display node on. We'll stretch it out so that it looks like a timeline and we'll use bullseyes either in their circle or rectangle shape to tell our game when to play certain sequenced actions or events. The basic engine for running the timeline is simple. We start with a constant node, then you add a counter to keep track of the current frame or second. Then you need a map node, which is the way that we communicate with the marker node. A constant will go into the count up on the counter, and the counter will go into the map. The map will go into the marker. The game is running at 60 frames a second, so the counter will count up by one since that's what's on the constant node on each frame. The rule of thumb is, for as many seconds as you want your timeline, you multiply that by 60, and that will be your counter value. So in this case, 600. You'll also put that into the input range high end on the map node on. The output on the map node on should be between zero and one. Now the indicator inside the marker node on will take exactly 10 seconds to get from start to finish. If you want the timeline to move in a more lockstep second by second way so that there's no overlapping with events, you can add in a timer. You'll simply put the constant node on directly into the timer and then the timer will go into the count up on the counter. We'll change the count range down to the number that you want the timer to count in seconds. And then we'll change the map node on to accommodate and you play around with these settings until you get something that you like. This will prevent the blue indicator from overlapping on multiple bullseyes at once. So I have a sample scene here with a 10 second timeline. I'm using the game screen for the camera, a person, and I've added an effect and two text bubbles. When you have a text object node on set to invisible with a texture, it will show only the text and the texture when the texture node on gets an input. That's how I'm going to make the text only appear when I want it to. Now we'll just add our bullseyes onto the timeline to create the scene that we want. Cutscenes are going to take a lot of planning, and most of the time spent is going to be trial and error and dialing in your numbers and where the bullseyes go on the timeline. I want the character to move into the frame from the left and then move towards the camera, so I'm going to put two bullseyes at the beginning for that. Then we want the first text bubble to appear. You can manipulate the output of the bullseye to make it fit into different things. In this case, I want it to be the player move left right and player move forward back. We'll use the inversion node on to get negative values and we'll plug those into the person. Then we'll plug the third bullseye into the effect and into the first text bubble. We'll add another for the second text bubble. Then we'll have another bullseye to tell the character to move off screen at the end. Our little scene here should be done at this point. Let's see how it came out. So it worked. Now I have a second cutscene that I worked on. It took me about an hour and a half, so I'm really just showing the time lapse of it. I wanted to show you that you can actually create more complex scenes with the timeline. It just takes a very long time. And that's including the fact that I didn't really texture any of the backgrounds. I didn't add any decorations to the scenes. I didn't add more sounds and dialogue and details. A lot of your time when making cutscenes is going to be taken up by adding things to make everything look smoother and more realistic. A tip for making cutscenes is you only want to add sequenced time-based actions onto the timeline to avoid cluttering. So if you have things like characters exploding or things happening in the scene, you want to build as much of that scene logic into the objects themselves. You really want to leave the timeline only for time-based events. You can do things like play around with a camera by changing its position with teleports or even creating a sort of camera person by attaching it to a person and having them move around. 
the possibilities are really endless, which is why most of the cutscene creation comes down to your planning and how you want to build it into the game. The timeline is just the tool that you use to set everything in motion. Cutscenes are really effective when they're enhancing the gameplay before or after them. So for this cutscene, I was kind of imagining this as the intro sequence to a level or game where you're running away from the red character, sort of like those Crash Bandicoot or Sonic levels where you're running towards the camera away from some big undefeatable enemy and there's lots of tension and stress. A tremendous amount of time is spent just dialing in the timing when it comes to cutscenes, so you'll understand why some games don't have as many as you'd like, because they take a long time to make. As you can see with the 7.5 second cutscene, if I actually took the time to add in all the textures and details that would make it a really good scene, it would have easily doubled or tripled my time and the note on count, which is actually just resting at about 66 right now. And this is the final product. That's the whole thing. That's three weeks of work. You're gonna be okay. In my head, I thought that was really, really cool.